Hey there, this is Sumner Healy, and I wanted to film a quick video because I get a ton of questions about what does the land buying process actually look like? What does my process look like? How can I help? Is this even real? So I figured I'd film a, a quick video to go through that. You know, a lot of times just hopping on the phone and giving me a call is going to be the easiest way to answer any specific questions that you have. But I figured we'd start at a bird's eye view. The most common question I get is, well, how did you even find my property and why did you send me a piece of mail? So a little bit of background. First, um, all of the information, all of the data that I pull, it always comes from the county recorder's office where the property is situated. If you feel like maybe one of the names is off or there's something slightly wrong with that data, most likely it's because it's outdated. Sometimes these county recorders don't update their information. So I apologize if there's any errors there, but that's where the data all originates from. On my side, um, you know, ever since I was a little kid, I grew up in Big Sur, California, I've been obsessed with land. All things like just raw, vacant land. Uh, and as I got older, I decided, hey, this is an avenue that I wanna pursue. This is an area that I love. We live in a country full of open, raw, vacant land that's in abundance. Um, and unfortunately, dealing with realtors and going through the more traditional route just never panned out. Uh, so instead, I go direct to owner. Now, sometimes people don't want to sell, and I totally get that. If you're watching this video and you say, dang it, Sumner, I don't want to sell my land, well, that's fine. You could just stop it here and you don't need to proceed. Now, if you have any inkling of saying, well, you know, I do want to sell my land, I've thought about selling my land, but I don't really know what that process looks like, I'll explain how my process works and what it looks like uh, related to, you know, potentially going through a realtor and what the differences are. So when it comes to buying land on my side, there's kind of two categories. If the purchase price is beneath $5,000, I'll go the route of what's known as a notary close. So what that means is I do all the due diligence on my end to make sure that the chain of title is clean, the property is accessible, the topography is relatively level or somewhat manageable, and then from there I'll hire a notary in your local area, I'll mail them a warranty deed as well as a cashier's check, We'll have the deed notarized, they'll pass off the cashier's check to you. And then from there, I'll get the actual warranty deed recorded at the county office where the property is situated. Now on the flip side, if the property is above $5,000, then I'll just engage a title company. What's nice about both processes is I cover all closing costs. Everything down to the last penny, I cover, which isn't necessarily standard. In most real estate transactions, the seller is the one always covering closing costs. Not in this case. I want to make it as easy as possible and cover all the costs. What's nice is there's also no realtor commissions. Quite frankly, as much as I, I have worked with realtors and I try to be kind to them, they don't always help. And sometimes the percent that they can take is just unwarranted and unjustified. And so I really avoid working with realtors at all costs. Uh, what that means is that it's more money in your pocket um, and there's just no additional realtor fees or anything along those lines. The other thing is that land is incredibly illiquid, right? Let's say you want to go list your land with a realtor. It might be on the market for years or you know months. You know, it can take a long time. On my end, the typical closing process, if we go with a notary, it's gonna be about four to five days. If we go through a title company, unfortunately, some of it's up to their own discretion, but that process is typically two to three weeks until you receive the funds in your bank account from escrow. So what you're looking at is a compressed sales cycle. You can say, hey, I have a piece of land. I've thought about selling it. I'm going to sell it now and I want the money as soon as possible. Well, that's really the route to go here. Um, and ultimately, we make it headache free. There's no haggling. There's not this endless back and forth. We just make it really, really simple. Um, in regard to you know my background and who I am, um, like I said, I grew up in California in a little town called Big Sur, which is right smack dab on the central coast. It's incredibly rural out there. And I grew up with no power, you know, had water from a well, but no traditional city water. I lived a lifestyle that was, before the term was cool, you know, homesteady. Uh, and that's a lot of the lifestyle that I like to offer to other people by, you know, purchasing vacant land and then offering it to others that are looking to live a similar lifestyle. And look, I get it. You know, sometimes you buy land and you have expectations that I'm going to go build this off-grid cabin or I'm going to go build my home here or I'm going to use it on the weekends to camp on. Sometimes life happens, right? And 
that doesn't always pan out. And that's where a route like this comes into play. If you've been sitting on this piece of land for a long time and it's just racking up annual taxes, this is a good avenue to go. Now again, I wanna make full warrant and make it fully clear that you don't have to sell your land, right? If you don't want to, that's totally okay. Ultimately, this is just a, an offer and you can take it or you can leave it or heck, you can even call me up and negotiate if you feel like, hey, you're slightly off with your offer price. Um, you know, ultimately the process that I follow is working off of averages. A lot of times I work in counties where I've purchased land before. So I base a lot of my prices off of what I've purchased land for in that county. But again, averages can be misleading. There's a, a classic saying that if you go into a bar uh, and Bill Gates is in the bar, all of a sudden the average net worth of everyone in that bar is you know, tens of millions of dollars. But in truth, that's not actually the case. And so if you feel like I've made a mistake with the offer price, let me know. You can send me an email, you can write me a letter, you can give me a call, uh, I make mistakes. And so I, I totally understand if you feel like there's been something that is off and I'm more than happy to work through it with you um, and see if we can get the ball rolling. And the other thing to mention too, this is something that comes up often is saying, hey, you know, I wanna sell this piece of land Unfortunately, I'm not in the title. It was my father's or my grandfather's or my great-great-grandfather's and they passed away. Can you help me? And in a lot of cases, I can. I've been through the probate process many, many times again. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but I can engage people that can help go through that process. And so if you've got a property that's got some funky title issues and you don't know how to go about it, um, usually I can help. Now, not in all situations, but in most situations, I can help figure out a solution. Even if I don't end up buying it from you, I can just help you get you on the right track uh, and help clear up any issues that come up with that property. So anyways, I know I've talked for a long time here, but really wanted to go through some of the common questions. Again, if you want to give me a call, my number is down below. You can reach me there or you can always send me an email or what have you, and I'd be more than happy to discuss further. Anyways, hope you're having a great day and I look forward to hearing from you. Take care.